and then sitting in the hotel room, and I was like, why am I, why am I putting this stress on myself? Why? For what? And then that was like kind of like a snapping period. Then when I fought Rod Tang, I was like, everybody's so worried about winning and losing. Why? Why? Because you're going to die someday. You're going to die someday. Right. So why the fuck do you worry about winning and losing? Are you having fun? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Who cares if you win and lose? Welcome to the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy, where you will learn the tips, tricks, and strategies he teaches his world-class clients to give you the skills to dominate any business. What's going on, Mindset by Design crew, and welcome to episode 392. Hope you're amazing, as always. We're deep into November already. Stay relaxed, stay focused, and keep hustling. This is your time right now. Remember, like I said last episode, if you didn't see the last episode, go and listen to the last episode. It's awesome. Be nice. Do nice, guys. I should say, do nice, guys. Finish last in sales. And it was a clip from Patrick Bet David. And um, the answer is maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. You got to go and check it out. You got to go and check it out. But something I was saying is that there's so many people right now, when it hits November, they kind of start to slow down. Think about this, right? You might be even doing the same. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll crank out November and then I'll start to relax December. And my point is, um, okay, you can do what you want. <laughs> it's all good. But why? Do you know what I mean? Why? Because what we want is to make sure that the start of 2023, think about that, I just said that word, 2023, it's a number, not a word, I get it, but I just said it, and that's probably the first time I've actually said it, 2023, and it's like eight weeks away, that's wild, but you know what, it means only what it means to you, for me, it means that I'm on more of a mission and I'm helping more people in 2023 than I ever have in my life. That's the mission. I'm going to make my life bigger and better than it ever has been. I'm going to make sure that I'm the best version of me that I ever have been. I'm going to make sure that my family and money and everything and my health is so big and badass (laughs) that, that... It starts now. It starts with the decision right here, right now. And I want you to make that decision too. I want you to make that decision to really own your life. And I say that because today's episode is a little interesting. I don't know if you know, and obviously you do know, (laughs) that I'm a monster martial arts fan. I've done it since I was a little kid. And... Yeah, trained all my life, fought fought many, many times. And Demetrius Johnson. If you don't know Demetrius Johnson, he, um, Joe Rogan said he was the pound for pound, the best fighter for in the world for many, many years. And I agree with him. He's just a, a smaller guy, so didn't get the love that he deserved. But technically and everything, he's incredible and still is incredible. So he fights over in an organization called One Championship. And my point of view is One Championship is the premier martial arts organization in the world. It is not the UFC anymore. One Championship will take over for the purest fans. You know, I'm not going to go into... My my girl always gives me, um, teases me because I'm obsessed with One Championship. I'm obsessed with it. You've got submission grappling. You've got kickboxing, Muay Thai. You've got MMA. And it's all in the same spot. And it's all the best guys in the world, right? You've brought in all the top Thai fighters in the world, all the top submission grapplers in the world, all the top kickboxers in the world. It's Anyway, I love it, man. And it's got that martial arts feel. So Demetrius is obviously a world champion over there. He just actually won his, uh, his second belt. And... He's hyper intelligent. This is the thing about Demetrius. He's hyper intelligent, hyper aware, and an incredible world class performer. And what are we all about here with with everything I do? I was going to call it Mindset by Design. That's the name of the podcast. But hey, I've got another brand, which is what? Yes, the unfair advantage. But 
If you go over there right now, and I'll get back into Demetrius, but go there right now. And I mean this. I mean this. I've got something so badass for you. So badass that it's going to be an absolute game changer. If you're in sales in any capacity, if you're selling ocean liners, if you're selling pens, it does not matter. You need this in your life because everybody wants to be that top performer again. And to keep that consistency, it's 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 a roller coaster. So the first thing I got for you, if you're in high ticket sales, if you're an entrepreneur, real estate agent, insurance, whatever you're in, right? I've got the three Jedi mind hacks for doubling your salespeople's results. That's it, right? And then once you've got that, right? And that's a that's a real proper ebook, right? And we're talking they call it ebook, but it's a book. And it's it's so detailed, it's so badass, and you're gonna absolutely love it. Well, so we got We've got a brilliant training, which is called The Science of How to Use Your Brain Waves to Have Jedi Powers, and we've also got The Brain Hack. So you need to go over there, basically, because those three things are going to tune your brain into hyper performance, and that's what I want for you. And then what I've got on the next page is, well, you're going to have to see, but it's over 10 hours of high-end HD trainings. It's even got certifications in there. It's got qualification in there. It's got trackings in there. And it's got, I I could sell this for at least a thousand dollars. This one level, right? This one badass level I could sell for, for at least a thousand dollars and you get it for free. Plain and simple. So head over to the unfairadvantage.online or hit the show notes up and um, get those today. So, back to Demetrius being a badass. I love this episode because something changed in Demetrius's life. His sister actually passed away, and it's heartbreaking. But like everything, we learn, we grow, we change, we evolve. We learn how precious things are around us. We learn how precious our life is, right? And that's what I want to share with you today because this is the top guy in the world, man. And he had a completely change of life, a change of heart, a change of perspective. And that change of perspective, we have to learn from. Oh, you go, Nandi, what is your MMA fire? Who cares? I'm interested in business and sales. And yeah, I get that. Me too. But guess what? we got to learn from the best in the world and how we can replicate or model his behaviors, his belief systems, his focus, his perspective, his expectations, right? If we can model those things and bring them into our own life, then we can get a little layer in our brain about how to step into being the ultimate version of us in a flow state when we choose, That's what an MMA fight, that's what a world champion does, right? They're able to perform at the highest level that they can perform at in in, in, under the spotlights when the pressure is there. And that's why most people crumble. There's probably other people as good as him in the gym. Well, maybe not, but close, right? But guess what? He puts it all together in those moments, and that's... That's the secret source, man. That's the secret source to being able to get exactly what you want and be that ultra high performer. So, yeah, that's what this episode's about, right? So we're going to jump into that now. Make sure that you're heading over to the show notes or heading over to the unfairadvantage.online and get your get your pack now. You're going to absolutely love it. I promise you. I promise you. And it's free right now, so you might as well jump on it today. Okay. Let's jump in this. Let's go and hang out with Demetrius, and I will see you at the end of the show. It was a good fight. It was a beautiful fight. Yeah. And how satisfying was that for you to come back from the first fight that you guys had? It was good. Um, it was good, but 
<laughs> that guy's face on the right. <laughs> I think it's the matchmaker Rick. He's hilarious. Um, for me, after the after the first fight I had with him, I went through like I think 2019. I think it was 2019. 2000, 2020 was a huge like shift in my life. You know that affected me differently and my mindset. And so when I lost that first fight to him, I was so, wasn't mad about losing. I was mad about, I put so much pressure on myself about being perfect. And it just drove me insane. Like everything I want to do is perfect. I still had that in me, but. In what way? What do you mean? So I don't know. Like I felt like I remember being in the hotel room and I rewatched the fight. And then I felt like it was just after COVID. So my, my sister passed during, uh, I was getting ready for a fight. Right. This is where it kind of stemmed from. So I was getting ready for a fight. My sister, she she died. And then seeing her pass. And then seeing basically the end game of life. Right. Mm-hmm. Like being there and seeing her just like she's there. And then seeing her go through the trauma. And then her being gone. And then seeing the traumatic how it affected my mom. And after, you know, I remember when everything happened, I was in the hospital and I was like, You guys need help clean up all this blood? Cause I can, I can, I can help. And she goes, honey, that's okay. Just, just go home. I was like, all right, mom, I love you. Let me know if you need me. I go home, start a balling. My wife's there. I mean, that was a huge uh, movement in my life where I was like, that's fucking in game. Like, doesn't matter what you've done before. That's, you gotta go peaceful. You go, you know, traumatic. Right. So that happened. And I was, and then it was pointing me. I was like, damn, like I called Matt. I was like, Hey, I'm not gonna be in, tra-. I was like, Hey, I'm not gonna be in training today. I gotta go bury my sister. Right. And I took a step back and I was like, fuck, man, I'm always training for a fight, always training for a fight. And my sister just died and I'm I can't go train because I got to go bury her. But there was like weird shit to my mind. I was like, I'm always getting ready for a fight, always getting ready for a fight. And then I went and fought, won the World Grand Prix. Fast forward, get ready to fight Adriano. We go through COVID-19. Right. All the gyms are shut down. Our gym kind of like we got uh, relocated. So there's only three of us training. And then I fight Adriano. And I was, the game plan was there, but I just felt like I wasn't, Matt even said, after I came back from the knockout, he was like, you know, when you left, I wasn't comfortable where you were at. Like, when you left, I was like, you're just going to have to fight through this. You're going to have to just get through it. And then sitting in the hotel room, and I was like, why am I, why am I putting this stress on myself? Why? For what? And then that was like kind of like a snapping period. Then when I fought Rod Tang, I was like, Everybody's so worried about winning and losing. Why? Why? Because you're going to die someday. You're going to die someday. Right. So why the fuck are you worried about winning and losing? Are you having fun? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Who cares if you win and lose? So I went there and fought him. I was like, all right. You know, I said, I told Matt, I was like, I'm not going to fucking run. Like, I'm going to exchange. Like, I don't care if he has a hard chance. I'm going to go out there and give him my best. And then there's a ASAP Rocky said, when has it ever been cool to knock somebody down? It's never been uh, cool Whoever made it cool to de- belittle somebody or whatever is not cool, right? So that's always in the back of my head. So when I fought Rotting, and then I, I felt that success. Not success, but I felt like I won the fight, and it was like, oh, dude, you did a good job. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it, you know? Go back home, take care of the wife and kids. And then when I fought Adrian on the second time, I was like, we do the training camp. It was probably the toughest training camp, but I started doing things different, right? Like before, I'm like, I got to be perfect. I can't, I can't have any beer. I can't go watch a concert, I gotta be strict. And I was like, I think the last sparring session after the Adrian fight, I was like, went to a concert, had two beers, had a fucking chicken sandwich. And I'm like, I need to enjoy my life because mm. eventually I'm going to die, right? And I don't wanna be in my deathbed. I was like, man, I was so strict and all that stuff. Like, I wanna enjoy my life. And so that right there, from that traumatic thing in my life, it's just shifted my, my whole perspective. Like. Okay, crew, let me jump in there. I let that play a little bit longer than I I originally thought I was going to, but I felt it was important, right? Because it brought him to this point of saying his perspective changed. And it did. And guess what? He went out there and performed better than I think I've ever seen him perform because he took the pressure off himself. And if we relate that to entrepreneurism and we relate that to sales and we relate that to performance in general, then think about this, right? 
the mission that you're on right now, whether you're doubling your sales, whether you're getting back to top performance, whether you're launching a new business, whether you're expanding what you're doing, whatever the hell it is, man, understand that there is an end to this life. And I've said this to a client the, 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 other, the other week, and she was like, that's so depressing. I'm like, it's not depressing. It's the opposite of depressing. It's, it's freeing. And it's freeing because it's like a computer game, right? And I've said this analogy many times on the show, right? Many times on the show. But it's like a computer game. Life is a computer game. It goes in levels, right? There's all these different levels. And we have to, we don't always get to the next level. But at the end of that level, to get to the next level, we have to fight like um, a boss, right? We have to fight the, the big baddie at the end. But that big baddie is us. That boss at the end of the level is us. Does that make sense? It's us. It's our, whatever you want to call them, our, our traumas, our, um, our belief systems, our, our focus, our, our confidence, our whatever you want to call it, right? But our inner demons, our inner world, because that's the only thing that drops the weight or releases the neural net or changes the filter in our brain to allow a new perspective in. And you hear what he said, perspective, right? He changed his perspective. And because he changed his perspective to just enjoying life, guess what he did? He was able to go in there calm. He was able to go in there free. He was able to go in there as an artist. And as an entrepreneur, I really, and a salesperson, I really believe that we're artists. We are, sales is an artistry, right? Entrepreneurship <laughs> is an artistry. It really is. It's an expression, right? The old days of selling, like, like Wolf of Wall Street, are long gone. And if you're still closing and, like, selling like that, man, come on. We're about to step into 2023, People don't want to hear that egotistical pushing. That's the way I got taught, taught. It was very clinical, exceptionally technical, high level and neurolinguistic programming. That's the way I got taught in sales back in the day that made me a top performer in two different countries. And I've taught hundreds and hundreds of salespeople, sure. But it was, it was very intense the way I used to sell. <laughs> it's very intense. And... Um, I just don't want to get sold like that. And I want to be able to buy. I want to allow the prospect to make the decision themselves and it be organic, it be natural. It just be something which we call progressive commitment closing, right? So we're not trying to close someone at the end, no. We're trying to allow them to come to their own buying decision so they end up just, yeah, it's a foregone conclusion because you have isolated not the ob well the objection too, but you've isolated their focus, their desire, their their the, who they are to the result. And when we can do that for the prospect or client in front of us, it's the right decision. So my question to you is, why can't you do that for yourself? Why can't you be? gentler on yourself and allow yourself to feel the desire inside rather than using what we call the prefrontal cortex which is the decision making part of our brain to go i'm gonna do this right that's willpower no we can't use willpower and it all comes from perspective so if you right now have had the experience of being a top performer in whatever industry you're doing right but you want to get back to being that top performer then you can't do it the way you did. Because think about that when you're coming up in a career, right? You, it's new, it's novelty, right? So you're, you're naive to a degree. So you can push and do this and push and push and push. And it's all exciting, it's all hyped up. But once you've reached the top, and you've dropped in performance because everybody does after a while, right? How do we get you back there again? How do we get that consistent? How do we get you to that level where you're that top 1% once more? Well, your desires have changed. The way you see the product and service has changed. Your experience through all of the clients has changed, right? So that means you have changed. 
and that's the point. So we have to activate what we call, I call certain drivers, new, um, new, a new fire inside of you with a new perspective, a new goal, a new version of you, and a new mission. And when we can do that, the, the results happen really, really fast. It doesn't have to take 12 months or two years or all of this madness, right? It can happen so fast in weeks, in days, and um, in your next call, in, in, in definitely in a couple of months. And that's what I want for you more than anything. And it starts with this perspective change. On my birthday, August 13th, I was my wife was like, oh, we didn't get you any alcohol. We just got, you know, all water. And I was like, no, give me a fucking glass of champagne. Like, I'm 30, I'm 36 years old. Like, I, I've been doing this for fucking, if I, if I train eight weeks and I can have one fucking beer and it's going to change my outcome of winning this fight, then I don't deserve to win the fight, I guess. So it is what it is. So I feel like that, that whole mindset is just made me a better a better athlete better fighter because it's released some pressure from you P pressure of being perfect mm. right and that's how it is like i remember one day i was like i just grappled that new wave right and i was grappling a kid who was 18 years old and he was fucking working me and someone who has an ego we were like oh, i'm the best fighter in the world like that should never happen for me i'm like dude you're fucking good good job i'm so excited to see i'm so excited to see what you've been able to achieve and in nine years, you've been grappling under John Dunnerhan. Like, mm. I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. I want to follow you. I want to follow your career, right? Like, just my whole mindset has just shifted. And, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I know what it is. It's that. But for me, that's how I like to look at my fights now. And, yeah, it's been making me. Randy Couture said that once to me. Yeah. He was talking about uh, fighting and winning. He's like, so many people put so much pressure on winning. He's yeah. like. He goes, you do your best. Yeah. He goes, you're trying to win. Yeah. And if you lose, the same people who love you, they're still going to love you. You're still going to have your friends. Yep. It's, it's, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And that's 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 like taking my game to a whole new level. Like, I truly believe that. Like, but I believe that. Believe that. Like, just that mindset of just like, I don't give a fuck what happens. Like, mm. like they're like, who, who, who are you going to fight? Yeah. So I'm like, I don't care. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. My pay doesn't change my outlook on life. It doesn't doesn't change me from my end game, which is financial freedom, right? So doesn't care. Who, I don't care who it is, you know, when it is. I just want to make sure that I never lose focus of my end game. And yeah, that's helped me a lot. So think about that, right? Because we all do business and sales for very unique reasons, and we all want different things. You know what? Everybody could write down exactly what they want, and there'd be similarities, but everyone's vision for the future is really different, man. Some people love cars. Some people love high-performance cars. Some people want jets, right? And these things and houses and all of those things are important. Some people just want to be able to wake up and do nothing. Some people want to be able to write books. Some people want to be able to travel the world. Some people want to be able to just spend time with their kids and their family. And yes, we all want aspects of those, but some people are very crystal clear on what they want and what they don't want. And when we can have that ultimate vision of what we're doing this for, then that's the fire that gets lit inside of us. Does that make sense? Does it? Because... What got you where you are isn't going to get you where you want to go. It's not. It's just not, right? I mean, it doesn't mean we can't take the skills, the lessons, and all those things with us because you're a badass for a reason. But the truth is behind that, we have to kind of revamp ourselves. We have to kind of like um, evolve and change. Because the thing is, the first time you started doing what you're doing, whatever it is, the business, the, the sales, um, you were excited, right? You were so excited. You were pumped up. You were focused. You were hyper-driven. And then over time, what happens is, is the brain or the neural nets and the chemicals just become a little bit not as strong. <laughs> Let's use those words, right? Not as strong. But why? They don't become as strong because because the, the, the synapses aren't firing to the same level anymore because we're not getting the same um, amount of uh, dopamine because it's not novel anymore. And because it's not novel anymore, we can kind of get complacent. And that complacency, it takes us slightly off our game, even if it's 
sometimes it's 90%, right? But that means the pattern in your brain, the muscle is already built. So we can go back and we can grab those behaviors and we can start building it into this new version of you, into the future, connected to those results, connected to the money, connected to that excitement again. Does that make sense? So that's that's my mission for everyone I help. That's my mission for 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 you. And if we can learn from people like Demetrius, who's one of the most badass people that's ever existed in martial arts in the history of martial arts, then um, hey, kind of humbles us, right? Kind of humbles us. He's just going in there to do his best, and that's what I want you to remember: do your best there's no more that you can do now you could do better your best but not really if it's your best right so do your best and that person that's in front of you if it's the right timing they're ready and you do your best they're going to buy off you they just are it's that simple so there we go crew it's a kind of a short one today but i hope it was a goodie for you that's the end of episode three nine two there you go so you want the next level Come and get it. Come and get it. Go to the unfair advantage dot online. It's not the actually. I should stop saying the. It's unfair advantage dot online. But you can go to the show notes. You can just type that in right now. It's very easy. But go and grab your Jedi mind pack. Go and get all of those stuff. And then on the next page, if you want to take things to the next level and really learn the science of what I do, then it's going to give you a beautiful introduction of over 10 hours of content. You're going to love that. I'm sure you're going to love that. Um, I know you're going to love that. And speaking of loving that, you have an amazing week. Much, much love. Keep kicking ass. You deserve it. And um, oh yeah, one more thing. Why don't you... Smile for me. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy. We'll catch you next time.